Hey guys, I believe we all know the satisfaction that you get when you make something yourself, when it really works and when it looks professionally made. That's the kind of feeling that I got after completing this project. It's a lantern, it makes light and it has LEDs. But here is where things get interesting. The top is touch sensitive, that is how you turn the light on and off. Let me show you how I made it. Of course, to make a wooden lantern I first needed some wood. This is a slab of tilia wood that I had laying around. It is nothing fancy, but it works, it is cheap and it looks good. Using my jigsaw I cut square pieces measuring 13 by 13 centimeters. These were going to be the top and the bottom sides of my lantern. Both of them are 2 cm thick. Since the two pieces weren't perfectly even in size, I clamped them together, then I sanded the sides until they matched. I started with some rough 60 grit sandpaper, then I moved on to 120 and finally I finished it off with 240 grit for a really nice smooth finish. Before removing the clamps I also rounded the corners. I didn't have to, but it was going to give the whole project a much nicer look. From my local hobby store I got these beams of wood. They were 1 by 1 cm thick and 1 meter long, which was enough material to make the frames of my lantern. Out of this beam I cut 4 pieces measuring 19 cm each. It is a very good idea to wrap the piece of wood in masking tape and then make the cuts over the tape. This will prevent the wood from chipping. Using the scrap piece of wood that was left after I made the cuts, I marked a line that was 1 cm away from every edge of the bottom piece. Then I outlined 4 squares in every corner just like so. I wanted to make mortises for the frame pieces, so I got a small chisel and used it to mark the sides. The mortises here are basically square holes where the frame pieces are going to fit. I used the chisel to slowly and carefully carve out these holes, following the direction of the wood grain. Even though this was the first time I was using a chisel, I would say that the results ended up looking very good. The frame pieces could fit nicely and tightly into the mortises, so I went ahead and glued them in place. Very soon I realized that I had forgotten to drill a hole for the power cable, so I took out my Dremel tool. First I drilled a hole in the bottom piece from the outside, then I drilled another one from the inside at an angle. With some wiggling I was able to get the power cable through the hole to make sure that it fits. Then I continued with making the mortises in the top piece. The process was pretty much identical to what I described earlier. Once those were done I glued everything together. The clamps were there to help me get a nice tight fit and to ensure that the top piece was perfectly horizontal. Once the glue was dry I sprayed everything with lacquer. There is masking tape in the middle of the bottom piece because other stuff is going to be glued there in just a bit. While the lacquer was drying I assembled the electronics for this project. This is what the circuit diagram looks like, at its heart is a PCF8883 chip which I talked about in a previous video. This chip lets you create a touch sensitive switch with only a few extra components. The sensing plate is just a piece of aluminum foil which is exactly the kind that you have in the kitchen. This capacitor here controls the sensitivity of the circuit, so if you need to make yours more sensitive, you can increase its value with something up to 2500 nanofarad, or just use a larger sensing plate. The chip runs on 3 to 9 volts, so I had to use a 5 volt regulator to step down the 12 volts from the power supply. The power supply is a generic 12 volt 1 amp adapter that I had lying around. When a touch is detected, the chip sends a signal to a MOSFET, which turns the LED on. A second touch that is detected turns the LED off. Since the chip is super tiny, I had to solder it to an adapter board, which I then soldered onto a perf board. You can easily get these adapters online, they're super cheap. Instead of a light bulb, I used an LED strip that I wrapped around a thin and long glass jar. I wrapped the strip as tightly as possible, and the wires that I soldered to it were also glued to the jar itself for extra safety. As I said earlier, the sensing plate is just a piece of kitchen aluminum foil. I glued a small piece to the bottom side of the top piece of the lantern, but I also left some space here for the circuit board to fit. This is the perf board that I used. It measures 2 by 8 cm in size and it is attached with the help of standoffs, which I glued to the wood. 
all the electronic components were soldered to the perf board according to the schematic, and that green wire that you see is stuck to the metal foil with some duct tape since I just couldn't solder it. The cap of the jar I glued to the bottom piece using some strong two component glue. Then I simply screwed in the jar with the LEDs in place. Probably the trickiest and most time consuming part of this project was to make these. They are wooden frames made of thin, long wooden pieces with a thickness of 3 by 10 mm and two layers of rice paper is glued to them. I made them by taking precise measurements, then cutting all pieces gently with a hacksaw. The pieces I glued together using some fast drying wood glue, then using the same glue I stuck pieces of paper to the inner side of the frame. The paper was precisely cut using a very sharp knife. Finally, it was time to put all the electronic components in place and put the covers on. And this is how I made my touch activated LED lantern. All I can say is that I'm super happy with how this turned out. I got to improve my woodworking skills and I actually made something that I was going to use. If you have any questions or comments, just leave them below and subscribe to my channel to never miss any of my future videos.